G'day, Glav here and welcome back. Please remember, if you like these videos, hit that subscribe button and hit that like button as well. On this tour of the southwest of Thailand, we do about 2,000 kilometres and stay in the towns of Cha'am, Shampon, Renong, Prachip Kirikan, Kanchanaburi. We visit the Erawan waterfalls, Saraburi, then home. We head out at 4am in the morning so we can be a bit naughty and take the bridge in Bangkok. We pretty much stayed off most of the major highways and took the smallest and most interesting roads we could find. Check out the Thai salt mining that we came across. In Australia we use large front end loaders that carry many tonnes of salt in a single bucket. In Thailand, where labour is cheap, one person carries two pans of salt across their shoulders to a stockpile. We spend our first night in Cha Am after travelling about 300 kilometres. Most days are pushing between 35 and 40 degrees Celsius. Chaam is normally a lovely beachside town, but we didn't realise that it was a public holiday and the place would be just packed. The ocean was hot and it was hard to get a spot on the beach without vendors on the beach trying to rip you off. While Chaam successfully caters for foreign tourists, it remains a Thai resort essentially, with a large amount and the majority of Thai tourists. The sea isn't really crystal clear, so if you want to do some diving or snorkelling, you should go down further south down the coast. Thai people visiting Cham usually come from Bangkok for the weekend. So the beachfront is very quiet during the week and gets more animated during the weekend and national holidays, as we sure found out. Cham to Shamphon is another 300 plus kilometre ride. Shamphon is a city at the central Gulf Coast or Royal Coast of Southern Thailand. It is the provincial capital of Shamphon Province. Shamphon has been able to maintain its natural beauty largely untouched by mass tourism and is relatively unspoiled. Shamphon is an elongated province with 220 kilometres of coastline offering pristine, uncrowded, fine sand beaches, especially along the patios, Gold Coast and beaches. I just love this place and would return to it in a heartbeat. It was only a short hike in terms of the 160 kilometres distance from Champon to Renong. However, most of this ride was tight, twisty, mountainous and great motorcycling roads. It was really worth the ride if you take these mountain roads. Renong, however, is a small border city with limited tourist interest. Renong contains a couple of natural attractions such as the hot springs and some unspoiled mangrove forests. The city centre is actually seven kilometres from the ocean. To be frank, I'm not sure, apart from the great ride through the mountains, if I'd make the effort to visit Renong again. Having said that, I didn't really go out to the coastline. I have no real footage of Renong because most of it was pretty boring city.
Renong to Pratchip Kirikan is an okay type ride of about 300 kilometres in distance. Contains some boring highway type running and on also some more interesting smaller roads that we always chase. On this day we got belted by a significant monsoonal type downpour that saw us hold up under a shop awning for a few hours waiting out the uh, rain to stop, which as always it eventually did. Pratchett Kirikan itself was a disappointing type town for a beachside town. It didn't have an interesting beach um, and it wasn't conversant to spending time either sitting on the beach uh, nor swimming. I'm sure there's coastline near there that's uh, more interesting but we just didn't get to see it. Pratchip Kirikan to Kanchanaburi was an absolute scorcher of the day with the temps pushing about 40 degrees. A distance of about 310 kilometres and again we followed the smallest roads we could find, nearly all back roads. I love the town of Kanchanaburi. Obviously it's home for the bridge over the River Kwai, which I won't talk much about now because I've done another video previously on this complete area including the bridge. Needless to say, this is a very special place for Australians. Good night hat at our favourite uh, bar in Kanchanaburi, and uh, just a great place. From Kanchanaburi, we headed to Arawan Falls, which is about an hour's ride each way, and then on to Saraburi, therefore all up for the day about 340 kilometres. It was a bit of a logistical area on our part as it was a public holiday on the day we went to Erewhon Falls, the King's Coronation. Erewhon Falls itself has seven sets of falls spanning across a few kilometres. Unfortunately, the Thai authorities just continued to let people pack into this national place. You literally could not move. It was hard to get a seat anywhere and it was even harder to find a piece of water to go and soak in. I would come back here but I'd make sure that it's not in peak season, preferably in rainy season and was during the week and not on weekends. The entrance fees here to Erewhon Falls are very expensive in my opinion with 100 baht for Thai nationals and 300 baht for foreigners. From Erewhon we went on to Sarabui which is in central Thailand province. We stayed out in the boonies at a cheap uh, hotel, therefore not much to see of Saraburi itself. Saraburi was essentially a resting place before our last leg home. On the way across from Kanchanaburi to Saraburi, we came across a Vietnam War Memorial. We didn't go into the museum itself, but just wandered round the relics left for display. Next time I think we'll go to the museum as well. The last day of our ride was essentially a transport day down from Saraburi to home, which is about 280 kilometres. Again, we took an eastern path to avoid Bangkok. It's a pretty easy ride here this day. Not much to show on video either. Hope you enjoyed this latest Glav World video. And please remember, live life today.